Good morning, dear students. And our topic for today's discussion is infection disease of the nervous system. Infective diseases are usually caused by different agents. It can be caused by bacterial agents such as gram positive or gram negative uh, bacteria, my mycobacteria. Uh, usually uh, central nervous system lies, lies in tuberculosis or spirochetus, so-called neuroborreliosis or neurosyphilis. Except of that, the cause for infected disease of central nerve system can be provocated by viruses. The most common one is retinoviruses such as uh, a virus, a human immunodeficient virus, herpes viruses, usually it's type 2 and type 1, except of this, it's a virus of uh, a varicella, Epstein Barr, or cytomegalovirus, enterovirus, uh, and a lot of others. Other uh, agent for infective disease can be parasitic diseases like toxoplasmosis, neurocytocirrhosis, uh, cerebral malaria, uh, enterococcus, or some a lot of others, fungi, and prion disease. What kind of main syndrome in neurological disorders we may find if we talk about infective disease? Usually they it comes to us and show us the symptoms of infection, toxic syndrome, general cerebral syndrome, meningeal syndrome, disorders of consciousness, syndrome of focal neurological symptoms such as speech disorders, movement disorders, function disorders, ataxia or cognitive dysfunction. Uh, Another point is a liquid syndrome, a convulsive syndrome, polyneuropathy, uh, arsenic neurotic syndrome, with or without central nervous system disorders. The most common one is infection toxin syndrome. The main clinical manifestation of uh, this complex are uh, symptoms of intoxication and high fever. The fever can be of different types, with rapid or slow heating up, with chills or without it, with large or small variety of temperature, with short or long-term intoxication. Patients complain usually of the headaches. Uh, the intensity of headaches usually may vary. Uh, as well, it can be a complication, complaints on a dizziness, sleep disorders, weakness, muscle pain, reduce or, or, or even no appetite at all, and uh, occasional vomiting. A particular high degree of neurotoxicosis uh, is marked by retardation or uh, considerable agitation. Mental disorders, clonic or tonic convulsions, and meningitis. Next syndrome is meningeal syndrome. It's also a common syndrome which we, which we can find in uh, while examining the person with infective disease of nerve system. What is that? Usually, it's a disorder of irritation of the brain membranes. Headaches, soreness of the skin, and use a precaution on it, vomiting, changes, uh, heart rate, respiratory rate, hyperesthesia, like optical acoustic skin, occipital muscle stiffness, positive symptoms of Kernin and Brudzinski, and Lesage are the most common complaints and checkups which you can find in a person with meningeal syndrome. 
uh, if we will take the liquor for checkups, we can find the elevated pressure, uh, a lot of cells inside of it which cause further cytosis, uh, complication changes like uh, depending on nature and process, it can be like uh, including of paths inside of it or something like that. If we talk about symptoms, the most showable symptoms is Brzezinski and Kernick signs. Uh, both signs uh, show us the meningeal irritation, and you may see in a picture how to do it. Kernick signs is a resistant to extension of the leg while the hip is fixed, it's flexed. It. Brzezinski side is flexion of the hips uh, and knee in response to neck flexion. So meningeal symptoms, the most common ones. Symptom Brzezinski, Kernick syndrome, stiffness of occipital muscles. And as you understand, the most a common disease with meningeal symptoms called meningitis. Meningitis is inflammation of uh, cerebral membranes and spinal cord. It can be primary or secondary. The most common one is leptomeningitis and pachymeningitis. Uh, the difference between it uh, de uh, description is uh, is a point where we have the problem. Uh, Leptomeningitis is an inflammation of the soft dura mater or arachnoid mater of the brain, uh, and pachymeningitis is inflammation of the dura mater. In clinical practice, the term meningitis usually refers to the inflammation of the soft dura mater, generally. Meningeal syndrome, if you talk about uh, differential to diagnostics, what we're going to talk about. If you talk about meningitis, first of all, we need to find if it's infections or if, if there are infectious or inflammatory history or inflammatory anamnesis points. Uh, if the person has subfebrile or febrile body temperature followed by meningeal symptom and neurological or, or neurological symptoms. Later onset of hypertermia is typical for meningeal syndrome of another genesis like sub uh, subarachnoidal hemorrhage, brain tumor, or, or, some, or so on. And another point where we need, where we need to put our attention is it's a medicines predisposing to the development of the infection disease. Uh, usually, we will talk about the disease which changes the immunity and durability, such as uh, hematopoietic agents, immunosuppressors, or corticosteroids. Meningeal syndrome is irritation of the brain membranes without the inflammatory process. Play, pay your attention. Meningismus syndrome and in meningeal syndrome, it's absolutely two different syndromes. And meningismus syndrome, it's irritation without inflammatory process. The main complaints which you may get from your patient, it's like headache, neck stiffness. It also will have the Kernig's positive syndrome. In liquid, the pressure will be very high of it, but the compulsion is usually normal, so you we wouldn't find any pathological cells or increase the numbers of side of it or oikolocytosis. Sometimes the amount of protein and uh, chlorides can be reduced, but it's not often. Syndrome can be observed in infect infection diseases, tumors, and sharp drop of liquid pressure at the lumbar picture. Muscle myositis in a cervical spine is also a symptom. And as well, neuralgia of the occipital nerves and typical and atypical neuralgia of uh, trigeminal nerve.
another group of the disease which we can talk about is encephalitis. It's a group of diseases characterized by brain inflammation. It can be primary and secondary. The reason for it can be like viral agents and bacterial agents. It can be infectious or allergic and sometimes toxic. The main symptoms are similar to plimorous ones, like a fever, headache, mental changes, convulsive attack, focal neurological symptoms, again, the background of the clinical and laboratory data of the infection or inflammatory process. Another disease is a brain abscess. It's not a very common one, um, but what is that? This is a local accumulation of the pulse inside of the brain matter. And clinical picture includes complaints on a headache. It can include lethargy, fever, focal neurological symptomatology. And the, the symptomatology depends on a place where the person has a brain abscess. The main points of diagnostic, uh, it's very clear and absolutely understandable, like clinical assessment of the patient. You need to, uh, to make all you can to get the all information about examination of the somatic status of the, you know, the person. And another point, it's an information about neurological status. Uh, except of that, we usually use the blood test. It includes general blood tests and serological blood tests, which is determined by uh, the pathogen and the cause of, of the disease. Uh, except of that, we will include to our checkups uh, the spinal fluid test, its lumbar puncture, and in, if you need it, we may use the MRI or computer tomography, depends on what disease we want to make at a diagnosis. One of the most common situations which provocate the problem with central nerve system is hip infection. Human hip infection, it's infectious disease which causes uh, by a special agent, it's special virus, I hope that you know it. It's human immunodeficiency virus. It's a group of retrovirus. Uh, there is a decrease in a general resistance of the patient or to opportunist, opportunistic, sorry, and microorganism and increased cancer risk. In human immunodeficiency virus positive people. The pathogen is detected in the blood, semen vacuum secretion, breast milk, salve, saliva, tear fluid, and sweat. There are three most important routes of the HIV transmission, genital, parenteral, and perinatal. Clinical classification of the HIV infection includes incubation stage when the person doesn't know if they have the disease or not, and it has no clinical symptoms and signs and no complication. Next, it will be the stage of primary, primary manifestation when the person, will, the person will feel the first complication. And then it will be the stage of acute infection and asystomic infection. After that, we'll have the stage of persisting generalized lymphadenopathy, and the last one is a stage of a secondary disorder or secondary disease which appears because of HIV infection. Due to our topic, we need to discuss the neuro-AIDS classification. Its syndromes Steaming from the direct impact of HIV. It's 
It's hip related meningeal cognitive motor disorders. Hip associated dementia, hip related myelopathy. Uh, and it can be others, uh, central nerve system lasers related to hip infection like acute aseptic meningitis, please pay attention, it's aseptic. Uh, progressive encephalopathy. Uh, hip associated with CNS lesions, it's inflammatory polyneuropathy and inflammatory myopathy. Lessors of infection system of OI and tumors. Uh, it's progressive multifocal encephalopathy, cryptococcal meningitis, cerebral toxoplasmosis, cytomegalovirus neuropathy, and primary CNAS lymphoma. How the HIV infection can be shown in an oral cavity. Oral mucous membrane disorders associated with his will include the um, following marks, markers like uh, various clinical forms of candidosis, viral infection, uh, so-called hairy or linked leukoplakia, uh, ulcerative neurotic gingivostomatitis, progressive form of periodontitis and Kaposhi sarcoma, and if you pay your attention on a picture, you may see, how do you think, what is that? Yes, absolutely right, it's a picture of Kaposhi sarcoma. Those pictures show all the different types of candidosis and different levels of it as a result of HIV infection of a person. Here is an example of hairy uh, leukoplaky in different stages of the person with AIDS. On those pictures you may see the ulcerative neurotic gingival stomatitis. It can be in a different places in our cavity, like on the cheeks or on gingiva or nearby the neck of the tooth. And here is the example of progressive form of periodontitis, which is caused because of hip infection and Kaposi sarcoma also with a different severity. And another very common infection for central nerve system, it's a heteroprotozoster infection. If uh, we'll discuss a little bit general information, we will know that statistically, statistics show that 15 people out of 100 thousand people have a herpes zoster or is also calling the banding zoster. Every year in UK a quarter of a million people develop banding the herpes zoster, uh, of which about a hundred thousand suffer from the post herpetic neuralgia. Abandoned herpes zoster is found in one out of uh, every four people over the age of 50 who has a history of chicken pox. The abandoned zoster and the chicken pox are caused by the same virus, so called varicella zoster type 3. Uh, there are around 80 types of herpes in a world uh, in total, but only none of them cause the diseases in a human. Initially, the varicella zoster virus causes a chicken pox when it enters in the human body after which it remains uh, and stays in a body for the rest for, of its life. After initiation, initial infection, the virus migrates along the sensitive nerve fibers to the cells 
of the final ganglia where it's settled down, uh, the virus can uh, then uh, repair, but no longer in the form of chicken pox, but as a herpes zoster. Uh, and this is the last information about herpes zoster is that it's uh, opportunistic infection for the people. Here is a picture which illustrates immigration of virus into our body and the reason why we have the marks on a skin. Uh, as you see, this marks it's so called in vesicles with a pulse and uh, they will appear uh, along the nerves in the same places where the nerves go under our skin. Here are some pictures which can show us the examples of uh, herpes zoster on a person's body. Uh, if you talk about, not about chickenpox, but about uh, herpes zoster, uh, the main difference, it's very um, painful and it causes a lot of problems for the person, especially if it's in a place where we have our clothes on. Here is the marks of herpes zoster inside of uh, oral cavity and on a face. The basic treatment of all infective of central nerve systems depends on the pathogen which we have, which has been detected. We may use antibiotic therapy, antiviral therapy, antifugal drugs. Uh, it depends on what we find in our person. And that's all for today. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, you may write it or give it to your teacher. Have a good day, take care of yourself, wear a mask and keep social distance. Have a good day.